Mike, thank you very much for joining us today. You've been coming to the World Nuclear Symposium since 2017. And during that time period, the price of uranium has gone from $20 a pound to $60 a pound. And I'm just curious, what other changes have you seen over that time period? Yeah, it's a good question, Jimmy. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. What was permeating the room was there will always be uranium to buy and prices will continue to go down. And as an investor showing up, we were laughed at pretty much. Uh, for wanting to get involved in the sector. Fast forward to today, prices have tripled. We think they have a lot more room to run. Uh, the, I don't, I'm not an attendance keeper, but by a look of the conference, there's more, a lot more people. Uh, we are not laughed out of the room for our view. Uh, and in talking with people who make the stuff, sell the stuff, buy the stuff, uh, convert the stuff and uh, that are involved in it, there seems to be a view that they understand that that uh, demand will outstrip supply, and that means rising prices. So it's, it's done a 180. Mike, you and your team are heavily invested in uranium equities, but you're also investing in physical uranium, and I'm just wondering why. Why not just buy the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust product? Uh, good question, Jimmy. Yeah, so we do. We, uh, we invest a lot in the equities. We also own a uranium project. Uh, we are a large shareholder of the Sprott Physical Trust, but then we go a layer deeper where we actually buy physical uranium ourselves. Uh, and that, that gives us a different view into the market because it's an over-the-counter market. So there's not electronic trading. You're not seeing a bid and ask. Um, it's good old-fashioned phone calls, emails. Hey, I've got so such and such, such for sale, this many pounds. Uh, and so you're really getting, when there's pounds for sale, I'll know it. When there's not a lot of pounds and I want to buy it, I know it. And it gives me a sense for the depth and breadth of the market, which is a very interesting view to have. Uh, and, and oftentimes the equities move based on where the physical is going, right? So uh, I like to have that. And I, I also think um, it's, it's, uh, that it's, it's great value. So, you know, yeah, we're happy to own it spread it out a little bit between the equities. The equities are the bulk of it, but we, we also have uh, a lot of SROT and, 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 and physical. So yeah, it's, we do it to get a look at the market. Mike, the WNA has reported that there are 436 nuclear reactors operating globally. There's another 60 being built with 26 of those coming online in the next three years. And depending on the size of the reactor, it could use anywhere from 500,000 to a million pounds. You need another two to three million pounds or another two to three years worth of inventory. Is there enough uranium out there to not only supply the existing reactors, but the ones that are coming online in the next few years? It's a good question, Jimmy. So there, you know, uranium, there's uranium around. There's projects can, that can be developed. It all comes down to it's not how much, it's at what price does how much come, right? So it, you, one of the things when there's oversupply, like there had been for many years, the, the lowest cost producers were able to handle a lot of what was in the market because there was a lot of above ground secondary supply. You're, but you're at a point now where demand far outstrips supply. So to bring on the new supply that's needed, prices need to rise as you go through the, the, the cost curve. You're moving up the cost curve. So prices need to balance that market, need to, need to move higher uh, to incentivize that production. So it's there, it's, there are known resources in the ground, now you got to convince people that they should pull it out of the ground. And the way you do that, if you're a utility, is you pay uh, higher prices and lock in long-term contracts. And that's what we've been starting to see occur. So in 2022, there was 125 million pounds contracted. We're already at that point in September of 2023. Where do you think we finish up the year? Is it going to be 150 million pounds, 200 right, million pounds? I'd be pounds? surprised if it's not at least 150. Uh, you, you, you think about it as a rate of consumption. So if you go back from 1993 to 04, there was a period of down prices, right? It was a excess uranium in the market. You were just coming off of, of Chernobyl in the, in the mid 80s and you had a lot of excess supply. And uh, the, the utilities would repurchase about one third of every pound that they consumed in a year. And they did that for the early 90s until the mid 2000s. And then they needed to, they drew down the inventories. Then they needed to restock. And when they did that, they were buying 110 to 130 percent 
of their annual consumption, and prices spiked a great deal. After Fukushima in 2011 through 2021, utilities were only replacing about 36, 37 percent of annual consumption. So what does that mean? They were drawing down inventories. Now they got to restock. And so, you know, when you look at the available primary supply and the secondary supply that exists, you're going to need higher prices for new production. And that's kind of where we're at now. And that's what the marketing's wrestling with in contracting. As they start to contract to consumption, they're running through those lower cost pounds. And that's where you start to see prices rise. I suspect you'll see uh, heavier contracting occur. Utilities, what I can see, the changes in speaking with them over the years, being at conferences like this, is there's awareness. There's a willingness to, for them to say, we get it. We're not going to pay crazy prices. Personally, they may. <laughs> they may not, but it's not unreasonable to think that they could. If, but if they contract soon enough to, to get their consumption, they'll pay much higher prices, but they don't have to be crazy prices. It all depends on what they do. But it, in my mind, there's a clear momentum behind a contracting cycle well underway right now. So bottom line is prices are going a lot higher. Anything can happen. You never say, you know, with conviction. I mean, we're, we have a lot of capital that is, doesn't have to be there, but we're making the bet that it will based on supply demand fund like this. Um, and again, you know, we're always looking for reasons why that's not going to occur. But uh, we feel as though the dynamics are such where there is a lot more demand than supply. And you speak to many different investors in North America and Europe. What's your sense, if, if we were to use a baseball analogy, what inning are we in in terms of this trade? Uh, you know, it's, it's because of what we do, we're, we're a uranium fund, right? So we're in it day to day. So my head is oftentimes there. So I have to be very careful not to be myopic and I have to come back up, right? When you're in it day to day, uh, it can get tiring, it can get exhausting, it can be euphoric, right? So because you're up and, up and down, but we always keep our eye on the ball and the ball is supply demand fundamentals. Um, so where, you know, the price of uranium, uh, where's contracting? Contracting you're in the early innings of a cycle. I, that's where I think you are. Price is a difficult call from there. Where are we, because that's price of the equities, that's going to depend on how big the market caps of these companies grow and how many institutional investors that can attract. We've seen a significant more amount of interest. I mean, I say we, the, by the market cap rise in the industry, I actually, we don't speak to a lot of investors. We're not that interested in spending our time doing that because um, we buy for our own stuff. We're not trying to educate them. Um, but just people who will call us, want to learn about what's going on. Yeah, it's there. What inning is the, is the price of uranium? You know, that the market will determine that. I, we just think it's got to go higher. Uh, I, you, you know, we, we, we're not into predicting crazy numbers for, for uranium. It doesn't need to get there. What I can say is this. In the last cycle, the price of uranium needed to get to 60, 65 bucks. And if you were to look at the consensus expectations before a, a what is considered to be a reason for the last bull market, the Cigar Lake flood in October of 06. And for those who don't know what that means, Cigar Lake was a mine coming online in 07, bringing 18 million pounds a year. And it was the largest mine and highest grade mine that was starting in the next year. That in 07, that flooded in October of 06. And by December, January, it was obvious it wouldn't come on for years. People today would credit that as the kickoff of the bull market last cycle. That's actually incorrect. The price of uranium was seven bucks in 2000. By the time that flood occurred, it was well into the 40s. It had moved almost 7x. That's a bull market. If you looked at the forecasts the month before the flood, and you said, okay, how long do they contract for? Six, seven years? That's typical contracting period. The market was in surplus of 125 million pounds. If you looked at the price forecasters uh, or the, the forecasters modeling, and Wall Street copies that, if, and prices went crazy. 
when the, when the flood came, even though there was a surplus in the market. Now let's fast forward to today. The price needs to get $85, $90 to balance the market. If I were to look at even the price forecasters forecast through 2030, they show something like, uh, they may have ch changed it recently, a uh, small change. Let's say 95 million to 100 million pounds, 90 million pounds of a deficit through 2030. We're, our math is much higher than that from a deficit standpoint. So in the last cycle, you needed to get into the 60s with a surplus showing, a flood comes. Three months after that flood came, the new forecasts not only showed 125 million pounds of surplus, they showed another 100. So they showed 225 million pounds. So somewhere between the time that flood occurred and the new forecast came out, they found new pounds that would come out of mines. Demand came down a little bit, but there was still a surplus. That doesn't exist today. There's no magic math that shows that there are surpluses. There are de structural deficits. And when we talk deficit, Jimmy, I'm not saying in the spot market today, you can't find a pound. I'm talking when consumption equals contracting. Not a third of consumption, not two thirds. How much economical pounds exist to sell? That's where prices go higher, and because fuel buyers are not financially incentivized to call bottoms. They are, finan they are incentivized to secure uranium. If it's $20 or $100, $150, they need the uranium. It's a small portion of the overall price to operate a plant. They will pay what they need to pay to feel that they have security. We're starting, we're, so where are we on that? You're still, I, my view is still early to not even middle innings yet. Well, Mike, I always enjoy speaking with you. You're always very frank, and thank you very much for sharing your insights. It doesn't make me popular with people buying uranium on the, on the utility side, but I'm okay with that. I, I just share what our view is, and I've been saying that since uranium was 20 bucks, and here we are. So we'll see where it goes. I, you know, We'll see where that falls. Uh, I mean, we'll see where the chips fall. I, I think prices go up, but uh, we'll see where we go. Once again, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks.